What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be talking about a couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here as the month of June is slowly starting to wrap up. But before we do actually get into the topics of today's video, all I ask from you guys out there, the viewers, the subscribers, is if you enjoy the content that I'm putting up here on YouTube, if you find value in the content, go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you're not in our Discord group chat or our Facebook group yet, both of those are absolute free of charge and they're linked down below. Very, very helpful if you want to talk to over a thousand other investors and traders, network with them, you know, share ideas, you know, just really chat throughout the day. Those are the places that you need to be if you want to be further connected with our community. So again, those are linked down below in the in the description box. And without further ado, let's just get right into it, guys. So today, the S&P 500 ended up closing down $3.60, down 0.12%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average ended up closing down $11 here, down 0.04%. And the NASDAQ actually ended up closing up about 30 points today. Uh, I think it was up about like 0.3% or something like that. But you guys can see the futures right now, they're down about a dollar and fifty cents, down about 0.02%. So overall today, the markets, you know, based on the closing prices, they weren't too exciting, right? And if we go back to the S P, you know, and we go to the one day, one minute, you guys can see we gapped up a little bit to about 2932, and then we just sold off a bit down to about 2913, where we closed. So that was about a 20 point swing from the peak this morning to where we ended up closing and if we go to the five day five minute you can see you know today we just simply continued that downtrend that we've been on over the past three days ever since we hit that all-time high at about 29.64 on the 21st of June in 2019 and you can clearly see the downtrend that we've been on because we've seen a bearish cross of the 50 SMA crossing below the 180 SMA the 50 SMA and the 180 SMA both of these simple moving averages They've been acting as resistance levels, and that carried on again into the close of the market today. Going over here to the 184-hour chart, guys, we talked about in yesterday's video how we got rejected right by, I would say, 2950 to 2960, which was the previous all-time high from the end of April. And you guys can see on the one-year, one-day chart here, it was also the high that we hit before that big collapse in the stock market that we saw you know, ending off the year of 2018 from this peak here at about 2940 all the way down to about 2346. So this is what I'm seeing right here, guys. Um, it's kind of a triple top at this point where we're slowly starting to see. The level that we're testing right now is around 2915, and the fact that we closed a little bit below that and we're still maintaining that downtrend on the five-day, five-minute, that kind of worries me and leads me to believe that we may be seeing um, some more red to come here in the S&P 500. So guys, tomorrow, just take a look at the 2915 level of support here. Um, if we break that, which we again are slowly starting starting to break that at the close of the market today, we may be actually going down to test 2985, uh, maybe 2900, which is the next level roughly um, of support here on the S&P 500. And of course, just keep an eye on these moving averages. Let's say we start to break into the 2800 level, you know, we may be looking to bounce and potentially test these moving average support levels, both the 50 SMA and the 180 SMA here on the 180 day um, four hour chart. And again, like I've mentioned in the pre previous couple of videos, the markets have been needing to cool off. And this is finally the cool off that um, we're starting to get here. And the question is, how long is this cool off going to last? You know, we're going to dump back down to $2,700. Are we going to get the rate cut in the next couple of weeks and then push to another all-time high? That's what I'm personally waiting for, and I have not taken any swing positions, guys. I'm not looking to take any swing positions until we see you know, how the market reacts to a potential rate cut in these next couple of weeks. And 
Um, you guys probably already know this, but the market's already pricing in um, the rate cut. You guys can see um, we were propped up all the way to 29.64. We were really overextended, basically on the news of a potential rate cut. That's what got us to the all-time high. So it's really priced in right now. And if we don't get it, who knows, guys? We may be dumping all the way back down to 2,700, maybe back down to 2,600. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We have to see, um, you know, what happens with the rate cut, what the technicals are doing over these next couple of days um, before we see maybe a $2,800 level, maybe a $2,700 level, and so forth. So the Dow Jones Industrial Average, guys, just like the S&P, if we pull back to the one-year, one-day chart, we're kind of at a triple top right here. We hit an all-time high at 26951 we hit another peak right at that level, roughly at that level at about 26,700-ish, and now we actually almost got to the all-time high. We were about 50 points off from the all-time high. If we go to the 184-hour chart, you guys can see it. We hit a high at about $26,900, got rejected by that resistance from the uh, the past couple of months here in the uh, in the month of April, we got hit, and now we're looking to test the 26,500 level of support. That's the next level that the Dow Jones is going to test. And let's say we continue this sell-off because if we see on the five-day, five-minute, you know, this is clearly still in a downtrend over the past three days. Let's say we gap down tomorrow, we break 26,500. The next level we're going to be looking for on the Dow Jones is going to be 26,000. $200. And that's actually a very critical support because if we look over the past couple of months here, we can see back in the month of November, we hit that level and got rejected, right? Making it a resistance. We hit that level again towards the end of February and got rejected. And then we broke out of it, making it a support. And if we break into it again, guys, let's say we break 26200 and we start to get back into the $25,000 level, we may be testing the 50 50 SMA, the 180 SMA, those levels are very strong support levels here. And if we break that, you know, that's going to be pretty, pretty bad um, on a technical basis for the Dow Jones. We may be testing, let's say, 25,500 at that point, And that's also a very critical support. So again, like I mentioned, guys, over these past couple of videos, this next week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks in the market is going to be very, very critical for how it's going to play out over over these next couple of months, in my personal opinion, with this rate cut that we might honestly get here in the month of July. So the NASDAQ, guys, we saw yesterday the NASDAQ had a 1.5% drop. I believe it was down like 120 points, if I'm not mistaken. And today, we actually got a little bit of a rebound on the NASDAQ. Well, the Apple stock Apple stock went up about $5 at its peak today, but still on the five-day, five-minute, you guys can see overall, we are downtrending still on the NASDAQ, right? We hit a lower high, you know, lower high here, and today we peaked at about 77.15, and then we broke the 50 SMA support and the 180 SMA support here, and it seems like we're getting rejected by the 50 SMA support to this minute while I am recording this video still. So the downtrend is still intact on the NASDAQ as well, just like the S&P and the Dow Jones. The $7,500 level is the critical support that I'm watching now for the NASDAQ. If we break that, we may be testing that 180 SMA from there, maybe $7,300 here. And especially if tech stocks, let's say they start to get weak because we saw the crazy run that the tech stocks um, went on on over this past month. Let's say they start to give in a bit. They start to sell off. You know, Apple, let's say, starts to dump a bit. Amazon, Google, Facebook. This may have a strong weight to the downside on the NASDAQ. And let's say we don't get a rate cut. Let's say the trade news with China starts to get worse, which will hit Apple very hard, in my opinion. You know, this can drag the NASDAQ down very hard and very quickly, which is something that worries me, to be completely honest with you guys. So I'm watching some 
7500 I'm watching that 180 SMA, and I'm watching $7,300. And the fact that we are breaking that 50 SMA here on the 184-hour chart, which has been a support over this past month of us running up on the NASDAQ, that also worries me for more potential downside here, guys. This can definitely be um, a sign that we may be falling down even more on the NASDAQ. So that's the market update for today, guys. You know, tomorrow I'm going to be interested in seeing what the futures are going to be doing in the morning. Let's say the futures are gapping down because today they were actually gapping up, which is why we saw that little run this morning before the sell-off. So let's say tomorrow we're gapping down that may lead to another red day tomorrow for the three major indexes that we talk about on this channel, the S&P, the Dow, and the NASDAQ. So let me know down below in the comment section, what do you guys think about the markets right now? Today wasn't too crazy of a day. I personally didn't trade. You all know at this point, I've mentioned it enough in the past couple of videos. I'm still in Mexico and I was actually out on an all-day excursion today. I wasn't on my Wi-Fi, on my laptop, on my trading platform at all today, but I still figured to record this video and bring it out to you guys because this is what I love to do. So NASDAQ, Dow, S&P, that is what um, is going down today. That's what ended up happening. You guys can see the futures right now. They're really just flat. S&P is down 50 cents. NASDAQ's up 50 cents. Dow is down about $20. Pretty much no movement um, in terms of the futures. So let's just talk about that one ETF that I'm really liking right now that I'm personally watching for a potential breakout. And I'm sure a lot of you guys may know what it is. And you can see it highlighted right here. It is ticker symbol DGAZ, also known as DGAS, guys. And DGAS is an inverse ETF that trades based upon natural gas. It goes up whenever natural gas is going down. And take a look at the natural gas future right now, guys. Notice how we're still trading under that 50 SMA resistance that's been a resistance over the past couple of weeks, pretty much since the big sell-off that we saw in the beginning of June of 2019. Take a look here, guys. We went from 262 down to about 215. We popped up, which opened up a lot of margin on UGAS, which is actually the inverse 2D gas. We started to test the 50 SMA, where if we broke out of that, you know, that would have been a huge bullish move for UGAS. That would have been a bullish reversal for natural gas. But the fact that we're still trending um, below this moving average is telling me this is a pretty strong resistance right now for natural gas. And if we can see, we got rejected today. You see the red candlestick here, and we have another um, green candlestick here forming a little bit below that red candlestick. So tomorrow, you know, if we're slowly gapping down a bit, let's say we're slowly starting to get back down to the 225 level, maybe 226, we start to see a pop on DGAS on top of that 50 SMA support here on the 184-hour chart. We start to get back up into the 170s. This can be the breakout move on DGAS that can honestly offer a ton of profit here, a ton of margin, about 16% from the previous high at about $201 to $205, guys. It's pretty, pretty incredible how much this offers. All we need to wait is for the confirmation of the pop here and for natural gas to get rejected by that 50 SMA. So guys, you know, if we do end up getting rejected, D gas can be a play, but let's say it doesn't go to our way in terms of the DGAS play, this is the beauty of the inverse ETFs. Let's say it pops out like that. Let's say it breaks out tomorrow. This is a bullish move and we can go to the inverse, which again, like I mentioned, is UGAS. And at that point, if we pop out of the 50 SMA here on DGAS or rather on natural gas, if we see on UGAS very quickly, that'll be popping us out of this 180 SMA, which again would be a very bullish move because this 50 SMA and 180 SMA, they've both been strong resistance over the past couple of trading weeks here, mostly in the month of June um, in 2019. So that's the number one uh, combo here that I'm watching. Either way it plays out, guys, whichever way it plays out, there's going to be a huge move either for UGAS or for DGAS, and that is what I am watching um, heading into tomorrow. And honestly, for the rest of this month, guys, you know, even when this week is over, next week, I still think these are going to be huge moves 
huge players um, in the game of inverse ETF. So today, some other ones that we're seeing here, we're still seeing a bit of a pullback, a bit of a cool off in gold. We hit a high of 1442 in gold, hit a low at about 1406, which was honestly an old resistance from a couple of days ago. If you guys can see it here, it was about the 20th of June. We hit about 1410, popped out of it, making it a new support. And we've been holding that level nicely. So gold, if we pop out of that 50 SMA here, the 50 the SMA resistance where we actually got rejected. Um, was it today? Yeah, it was today. We got rejected at that level. You know, if we pop out of there, JNUG, which has honestly been cooling off as well because it goes down whenever gold goes down and it goes up whenever gold goes up. But JNUG, you know, it'll be an awesome play if we do end up getting that break on gold, that breakout above the 50 SMA. And if that does end up happening, you know, JNUG is going to get popped out of that 50 SMA. And from there, up to the the previous high at about 1321 from where we are right now at about 1195 12 dollars per share that's going to give it about a 10 percent margin of profit so you may notice i'm not talking much about individual stocks because i haven't been focusing on individual stocks to be completely honest with you guys right like i mentioned i'm not really swing trading anything right now maybe day trading some of these stocks but i think a lot of them are not looking too attractive on a technical basis right now and i've just been focusing mostly on these um, volatility ETFs, right? The TVIXs of the world, um, these market ETFs, the SQQQs, the TQQQs, the SPXSs of the world, and of course, these inverse ETFs, because these do well for me in the day trading environment when I'm not really focusing on swing trades and when I'm not really seeing much potential for swing trades, right? If you guys recall in the previous Sunday video, you know, we talked about INTC being a swing trade that I'm watching. It popped up today about 3%, but I did not pull the trigger on it quite yet. It's still looking pretty attractive right now. At this point, I'd like to see a pullback and a retest on that 50 SMA. I'm still keeping it on the watch list here. We talked about 3M. 3M has really not done much here. It's looking like it's going to retest on this 50 SMA, which has been a support over the past couple of weeks here tomorrow. Tomorrow could be a telling um, time here for for MMM 3M, if we actually retest and successfully bounce and uh, maybe pop for that higher high here, maybe to retest 175, this could be a nice entry point tomorrow. But out of you know a lot of the major stocks right now, Intel and 3M are the only two. I'm sure there's a bunch of other ones that you guys are probably tracking, but for me, the ones I'm tracking, these are the main two that I see potential in, um, you know, as of right now. And of course, things can change here over the next couple of days, but right now, that is what I'm mostly focusing on. And of course, you guys know that again, like I'm watching these volatility ETFs, SQQQ, TQQQ, SPXS, you know, SPXL, these are all that trade on um, SPX, which is the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ, right? So that is what I'm watching heading into tomorrow, guys, mostly DGAS, mostly gold futures, and 3M as well as, uh, you know, INTC. Very very quickly, let's take a look at Apple. I don't know why it popped. I think there was a catalyst regarding Shopify, I think. I think that might be why Apple popped today. That, that could be completely wrong. If you guys know, drop a comment down below. But I was reading an article about um, some Shopify integration on the iPhone or something like that. I think that um, ended up popping up Apple stock today. But it seems like we are retesting 200 on Apple. Let's see if we do end up breaking. Um, that could be a potential play. But again, the NASDAQ right now and the markets in general are under pressure. They're in due for a sell-off. That could bring down Apple, so I'm kind of being careful with that one. You know, Amazon today was up $19, nothing crazy, up about 1%. Facebook saw a bit of a dump today, 0.6%, looking like it's going to retest that 50 SMA. This could be a potential play tomorrow because, um, you know, out of the tech stocks, Facebook's been doing quite well, so we can see... If it pops here, you know, that could be a play. And all the tech stocks have been doing quite well, guys. But on a technical basis, Facebook's actually looking like um, it's the best right now, in my opinion. You know, Google down about $6 today. This one's looking very ugly. I'm not touching Google whatsoever. It might be a put option play, but a swing trade, I'm not touching it whatsoever based on these technicals here. You know, Microsoft 
It's at all-time highs right now. Uh, it was, rather, a couple of days ago. It's pulling back a bit. This could be a potential bounce-back play, maybe 2 3 4%, but I do see some more potential in some of these other ETFs. You know, Netflix, up about $1.90 today. This has just been trading horizontally over the past couple of months. I'm not really finding this attractive at all, especially leading up to the launch of Disney Plus, the streaming service. This can really hurt Netflix's stock, in my personal opinion. So, I'm going to wrap up the video here guys i hope you all enjoyed it found some value in it if you did feel free to go down below and hit that like button like i mentioned it really does help me it helps the channel out in general and i do appreciate every single one of you out there that's watching the content liking the content subscribing to the channel it really does mean a lot to me drop a comment down below let me know what you guys think about all of this different stuff what do you think about the markets subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that i do make a video. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.